If you've ever been on a ski trip before, you'll know that every mountain shares the same general trail rating system. Yes, that's right. You'll see the same three symbols, a green circle, a blue square, and a black diamond. So how did these symbols come to be in the first place? And what makes a green trail green, a blue trail blue, and a black run black? Well, in this video, we'll unpack the various skiable terrain ratings to help you understand what to expect as you explore trails ranging from the tamest learning areas to the ultimate challenges. And we'll caveat that trail ratings across different resorts are almost entirely subjective and determined by the mountains themselves, so we'll give you a sense of the range of terrain features you can expect from each designation, no matter where you go. Enjoy! Before we get into the ratings themselves, it's helpful to quickly start with how these colors and shapes came to be in the first place, and it turns out the origins of this system are actually fairly recent compared to the sport of skiing itself. In the early 1960s, a group of ski industry professionals, including trail designers and ski instructors, gathered as part of the National Ski Areas Association, or NSAA. They recognized the need for a consistent and universal rating system that could help skiers determine the difficulty of different slopes. In 1968, after years of discussion and collaboration, the group ended up going with a rating system that had actually been pioneered by the Walt Disney Corporation. Disney had designed the ratings for a planned ski resort that never came to fruition, but they put a ton of market research into analyzing which shapes would be instinctively associated with certain difficulty levels. The three-tiered system chosen was the green circle, blue square, and black diamond scheme we know today. This rating system was quickly adopted by ski resorts across the United States and has since become a widely recognized standard worldwide, and as a result, allows visitors to estimate with at least some degree of certainty how difficult runs are no matter where they go. For skiers and riders who are just starting out, Green Circle Beginner Terrain will be the first natural area on the mountain to spend time. Beginner terrain consists largely of two types of terrain, learning areas and regular beginner slopes. Basically every ski resort offers a dedicated beginner learning area, sometimes informally called a bunny slope or bunny hill. This is where skiers and snowboarders who are very new to the sport can develop initial fluency in a low pressure terrain environment. Bunny slopes are grouped, gently sloped, and generally spacious. They tend to be located near the base of the mountain for easy access, and they often form a distinct, isolated pod of terrain sometimes with its own dedicated lift or carpet. Once you graduate from the bunny slopes, you'll want to branch out into other terrain labeled with a green circle on a trail map. Beginner slopes are more varied than beginner learning areas, but they are still generally quite consistently gently sloped and grouped. While you won't find moguls or steep sections on beginner terrain, you might find sections that are relatively narrow, or in rare cases, lightly gladed with well-spaced trees, as in the ones at Beaver Creek's McCoy Park. Although most resorts will include some quantity of beginner slopes, there is significant variation in just how much. Some resorts, such as Beaver Creek, Deer Valley, or Okimo, offer abundant beginner terrain, including some beginner runs off the peaks of each resort. On the other hand, other resorts may offer only a beginner learning area, or a few unremarkable beginner slopes near the mountain base, which can feel monotonous quickly. If you plan to frequent beginner terrain, We'd suggest consulting the trail map or checking out our reviews to understand the amount of beginner terrain available. Fortunately, at most resorts, beginner terrain tends to open early in the ski season and stays open consistently throughout the winter. For skiers and riders at the moderate level of proficiency, Blue Square Intermediate Level Terrain offers a new world of diverse terrain to explore. Intermediate terrain is far more varied than beginner terrain, and it can include relatively steep sections, tighter but still reasonably pitched glade areas, or even some high alpine bowls. Some resorts may also leave certain blue runs ungroomed, resulting in moguls. Intermediate terrain is generally higher stakes than beginner terrain. You won't be able to control your speed with wedged turns anymore, and you'll be facing higher consequence situations like hidden fall lines, tighter turns, and more aggressive skier and rider traffic. Still, skiers and riders should not expect precipitously steep terrain, exposed rocks, cliffs, or similar obstacles on intermediate terrain, making blue runs a relatively safe next step up for a visitor who feels comfortable on green terrain and is ready to try a new challenge. It's worth noting that at a small number of mountains, 
Intermediate terrain may be split into two sublevels, single blue and double blue, with double blue terrain typically indicating a level of challenge between intermediate and advanced. Sometimes, double blue trails are also depicted as blue blacks, with a black diamond inside of a blue square, and in many regions outside North America, they're depicted with a red square or circle. Generally, blue trails tend to be distributed fairly consistently across a mountain, allowing for comfortable intermediate skiing and riding from peak to base. Like beginner terrain, intermediate level runs tend to be open early and consistently throughout the ski season. Fortunately, intermediate terrain is generally more widespread than beginner terrain, meaning that skiers and riders who graduate to blue terrain will enjoy a significantly wider selection of skiable terrain at most mountains. After getting the hang of intermediate runs, skiers and riders may want to take the leap to the next level of terrain, single black diamond advanced runs. Just as intermediate terrain represents a step change in terrain diversity compared to beginner terrain, advanced terrain takes things up another notch, introducing a wide variety of novel characteristics that skiers and riders can experience on a trail. Advanced terrain typically includes steep sections, where good technical turning skills are required to control speed and it may contain wide open bowl sections with rocks or other obstacles, or glades, varying between widely spaced trees, which are easier to navigate, and tightly spaced ones, which are more challenging. Most advanced terrain is ungroomed, making moguls a possibility. Although many resorts in the western US maintain at least one groomed advanced level run, and typical resorts in the eastern US regularly groom several advanced runs. Also, Ungroomed advanced terrain can be less crowded and more scenic than beginner and intermediate terrain, providing a sense of solitude and natural beauty that can't always be found on easier terrain levels. Just as advanced terrain can feel much more exciting than intermediate terrain, it is also riskier and requires more care. Skiers and riders attempting advanced terrain for the first time may want to do so cautiously, either by going with a more experienced partner, taking a lesson, or seeking out the least challenging advanced level run possible on a day when conditions are favorable. Under a worst case scenario, advanced level runs can introduce significant injury risk. For example, tree collisions on gladed runs or high speed collisions and slides on groomed runs where it can be easy to gain excessive speed and lose control. Adding risk, a small number of resorts have treated single black as their most challenging trail map designation, including Alta, Mad River Glen, and historically, Palisades Tahoe. This means that highly technical expert level terrain may appear identical on the trail map to far less challenging advanced level runs. If in doubt, ask a resort representative if this is the case at the mountain you'll be visiting. Generally, advanced level terrain takes slightly longer to open than beginner and intermediate terrain. Most resorts will keep much of their advanced terrain open throughout the course season, but such terrain may take a few more weeks to open in the early season compared to easier runs. At the top of the scale, expert terrain, typically denoted with a double black diamond on trail maps, represents the ultimate challenge. If you're confident in navigating advanced terrain, expert level runs may be the natural next step, and they can introduce both increased excitement and increased risk. Across different resorts, some may use the double black label more generously than others, and even within the same resort, some double black runs may be significantly more challenging than others. Still, in most cases, expert terrain includes at least one, if not several, characteristics that make for a challenging, highly technical experience, including, for example, very steep pitches, exposed obstacles such as tightly spaced glades or boulders, or very narrow and steep sections such as chutes. At the most intense resorts, double black trails may require dropping in from a cornice or cliff, taking a no-turn straight line down the fall line, otherwise known as mandatory straight lining, which can result in rapid, uncontrolled acceleration, or sending it off jumps, also known as mandatory air, which requires technical expertise and can likewise result in rapid acceleration. With few exceptions, expert terrain is ungroomed. At some resorts, you may notice trail ratings that go even beyond double black, such as triple black, including at Big Sky Resort and Smuggler's Notch, or extreme terrain, with an EX inside the double black symbol, most commonly found in the western US. In most cases, these ratings truly denote terrain that is more challenging and more dangerous than typical expert trails, and skiers and riders should heed extreme caution when approaching this type of terrain. 
In the case of Colorado, there's actual legal guidance that mandates when a run should have an extreme terrain marking. This is the only situation in which a trail rating is not subjectively decided by the resort. To generalize, triple black or extreme terrain tends to include more or more extreme versions of the typical defining characteristics of expert terrain, with even less margin for error and higher consequences in the event something goes wrong. Many runs with this designation develop reputations, sometimes even national, of notoriety among skiers and riders. Expert terrain, and particularly extreme or triple black terrain, is inherently dangerous and should be treated with great caution. Expert terrain has a higher risk of falls and of injury or even death, and in the event of injury, rescue by ski patrol from expert terrain can be slow and challenging. To drive home this message, many resorts display prominently at the entrance to expert level runs warning signs with earnest pleas for caution. For these reasons, we recommend approaching expert terrain with a great deal of care, skiing with a partner, and taking it defensively. With that said, once you feel comfortable on expert terrain, you can enjoy what is often the most dramatic, isolated, and awe-inspiring terrain at most resorts. Crowds on expert runs, and any lifts specific to expert terrain, are generally sparser than less challenging runs, and snow tends to stay fresher for longer. At many resorts, expert runs offer a level of solitude, a distinctive aesthetic, or sweeping views that other terrain types cannot offer, and that alone is reason enough for many skiers and riders to want to try them. Logistically, expert terrain tends to be the last section of terrain to open for the season at most resorts, and it may be more likely to close, even during the peak of the winter season, for inclement conditions owing to its steep pitches, avalanche danger, and often greater isolation and exposure to wind. If you plan to primarily ski expert terrain, aim to visit resorts a few months into the core season, once such terrain has had a chance to fill in with the requisite natural snowfall. At most Northern Hemisphere resorts, the best window to hit this type of terrain will be between late January and late March. Lastly, more often than for other types of terrain, expert runs may be serviced by slower lifts or surface lifts, or may not be lift served at all requiring a hike or a ride in a snowcat to reach. Still, for some skiers and riders, the effort and risk inherent to expert terrain is outmatched by the distinctive characteristics of this terrain type. Finally, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the distinct designation for freestyle terrain, often represented by an orange oval on trail maps. Orange freestyle designations are often assigned in addition to a trail's difficulty level rating, such as green, blue, or black, rather than in lieu of it, but they signify that a trail includes one or more terrain park features, such as boxes, rails, jumps, jibs, or pipes. At some resorts, typically larger destinations, orange ovals can encompass natural features such as natural jumps, rock formations, and tree stashes, providing a unique blend of creativity in the surrounding environment. Orange ovals can signify features ranging from the smallest progression parks to the most extreme pro-level jumps, but they're often embossed with a size designation, ranging from extra small to extra large, that designates how technical the obstacles are. But regardless of the level, navigating these features requires a combination of balance, control, and creativity that most typical ski resort trails don't warrant. Ultimately, Understanding the different levels of terrain is essential for a safe and enjoyable skiing or riding experience, and thankfully, the streamlined trail system shared by nearly all mountains ensures just that. While trail ratings are certainly subjective, relative, and vary from one resort to another, they generally do a fantastic job of distinguishing between gently sloped trails, moderately pitched slopes, and the ultimate challenges. What do you think about this breakdown? Any terrain categories you would have rated differently? We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to hit us with a comment with your thoughts below. And if you want to see more exclusive tips on planning the ultimate ski trip, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all of which are linked in the description below. See you for the next one.